Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have a really fun video to share with you. We are going to be mass producing a set of 10 rainbow monochromatic cards. And you're wondering, rainbow and monochromatic? Well, they're a rainbow of 10 cards, meaning each card is a different color, but each individual card is monochromatic, which is my absolute favorite. First, I am going to open up the Simon Says Stamp January 2023 card kit, which is what I am featuring today. I am using mostly supplies from the kit for my 10 cards with the addition of a few um, extra little goodies from my stash. I am gonna just speed up very quickly taking some of the white card stock in the kit I believe you get three sheets of Nina, and I am trimming down 10 four by five and a quarter inch backgrounds for the base of each of my cards. Once I have these 10, I'm also gonna do another little bit of prep, and this time we are going to take some of my very favorite Simon Says Stamp color blend cardstock and we're going to be using the Aiden snowflake included in the kit and we are going to die cut a snowflake from 10 of these sheets. Now I was pretty careful with where I chose to die cut the snowflake because I want it to be featured or monochromatic in each of my cards. I think one of the sheets I actually die cut twice if I'm not mistaken. Uh, once from like one end that was one color and once from another. This snowflake die cuts beautifully. This color blend cardstock is amazing, you guys. Uh, the colors are absolutely incredible. Once I have all of these die cut, we are gonna prep our background. When I am doing mass producing of cards, I find it helpful to kind of do a lot of the prep work, if you will, before I start assembling the card. Now, I am going to be doing some ink blending on the backgrounds, and because of this, I really need it to sit and dry for a little bit so that the backgrounds are perfectly dry before I do the stamping and embossing so that the white embossing really stands out. I'm gonna take my first trio of Simon Says Stamp inks and I'm going to ink up the background. This is my pink color combination. I have added the trios that I am using down in the description below the video here on YouTube. So basically I've divided my four and a quarter by five and a half inch back five and a quarter inch background, pardon me, into thirds. So the bottom is the lightest, the middle is the mid-tone, and the top will be the darkest color. Now I'm going to show ink blending a couple of these before I speed up the video to do the rest. Something that is really amazing about these Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated inks is that you can get some really fun looks by uh, applying water. It's going to create those uh, lighter effects. I wanna create snowy backgrounds. These are gonna be snowflake themed cards, snowflake themed birthday cards, but snowflake themed nevertheless. And I think the addition of the lighter splatters all over really help give that snowy look. So I'm gonna use a distress sprayer to uh, you know, add water droplets all over, just kind of lightly pulling that trigger, dabbing it dry, and then setting it aside to completely dry. Now, full disclosure, I want to let you know that I did all my ink blending and I actually let everything sit overnight. And I do think that really helped. You wouldn't have to let it sit that long, but when you do let it sit overnight or for several hours, you can be assured that your ink is dry before doing your embossing. Next, we have our red color combination. With all of the beautiful Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated inks, there is truly a trio of inks for every color of the rainbow, um, and it looks amazing. As this ink dries and is absorbed into the cardstock, it definitely will kind of smooth 
out a little bit if there's any blotchy areas. I found the backgrounds to be really, really smooth. Next, I'm gonna use an orange color combination. This is not the orange color combination I use the majority of the time. This is a little bit darker, but I felt like it worked with my snowflake better. I let the color of the color blend cardstock really dictate what colors of ink I used here, and it worked so well. I ended up loving every single one of these cards. I think they are so, so beautiful. Next, of course, is our yellow. And I did try to put the snowflake next to the background as I was ink blending to really show that tone on tone and what I was trying to achieve with each background. This is a bit of a time consuming project in that there are quite a few steps, but I love mass producing cards. I do it quite often. If you already have the supplies out and you are already creating a design, you're not having to come up with a new idea for each and every card. You are only coming up with uh, maybe in this case, a different ink color combination. You could even do all of them exactly the same if you wanted, but it's very, it's just repetition basically. So it's a great project. Um, if you're watching a movie, you can, you know, ink blend a bunch of things, or you can die cut a bunch of things and then put them together when you have time. So it's really one of my very favorite ways to create a, um, set of matching cards. Now this ink color comes in the kit this month, which is awesome. It's the darkest color here. It's so beautiful. So, so pretty. And it looks really good, I think, with blue and purple. So if you wanted to do something that had multiple colors, I think that would be stunning. Next we have green. I love the limey green to the dark green. I think uh, the where I die cut the snowflake in the color blend cardstock matches our background perfectly. I love how this looks. And we're just going to continue on. I know that um, it's a lot of ink blending, but it looks amazing when finished. Now, each of these backgrounds is slightly smaller than A2 sized. Again, they're four by five and a quarter. And I purposely did that because I want to have that nice white border all the way around my background when the card is finished, which will help highlight the white embossing we're going to do on top. I'm also working on a glass mat. I'm using the glass mat from Simon Says Stamp, so it makes cleanup very easy. I am using basically the water left over from spritzing my backgrounds in between color changes. And when I'm finished, I did take a clean cloth and a little rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle, and I did make sure and get all of the ink off of my glass mat for the next use. The glass mat is perfect for this as it's a very quick and easy cleanup. Oh, look at this one, you guys. How beautiful is that? I love it. And then our dark blue to purple, we're going to do the beautiful royal blue colors. I think this or the purple might be my favorite. Um, I can't decide. Uh, you guys will have to tell me in the comments which color is your favorite. I do that quite often if I do a rainbow of cards like this. I always like hearing from you guys and uh, having you let me know what color is your favorite. Um, absolutely so much fun to do this. We only have a couple left to do and the next is the kind of magenta color combination. So that's going to be our like bubble gum, sweets, and taffy. And the perfect little snowflake for that. You can see the pink and purple on it. And then our last will be our purple snowflake. So all of the colors represented, this would make a really nice gift. The other fantastic thing about a set of cards like this there are lots of different greetings in the stamp set included in the kit this month, or for January, pardon me. And 
you, while I made mine birthday cards, this could be for anything. This could be a thank you card, a hello card, a friendship card, an anniversary card, a thinking of you card, all kinds of things. It, th the design will work for anything. And that is very much my very favorite kind of card to create is a card that can work for multiple occasions. I think it makes it versatile. You could do a whole different set. You could even make a set of thank you cards and wrap them up beautifully and give them as a gift for the holidays. I think that would be amazing as well. Okay, I'm gonna show you all of my backgrounds here. Look at these, you guys, how gorgeous are the backgrounds. I wanted to show those before we start stamping on them. Now I do have in my Misty a sticky mat that's going to allow me to hold my cardstock in place because I'm not gonna put it clear up in the upper corner. I'm going to put it about a half an inch down from the top and I'm going to start layering in snowflakes from the Snow Love six by eight stamp set included in the kit. I'm going to take Snow Much Love, which again, I made this sentiment work for birthday, but it wouldn't have to. And then I'm going to build my big snowflake and then smaller snowflakes around it, kind of in a, a natural arc around my sentiment, I guess, if you will. I want to stamp all of my snowflakes with one press of the Misty, snowflakes and sentiment, to save time. Where there are quite a few steps on this particular card, any time I can save a little bit of time, I'm going to do that. If you are maybe only doing one or two cards this way, I think it would be fun to stamp and emboss half of the snowflakes in white and maybe half in silver. Um, do multiple color embossing, that would be gorgeous. To, but as a time saver, I'm only going to emboss all of them with one color of ink. Now, if you need to save time and you embossing does add a little bit of time to this, you could just stamp and emboss maybe the sentiment or you wouldn't have to, Let's say you put the snowflakes in your Misty, you could stamp all of those and do a tone on tone look. So maybe use the darkest color of the ink trio from this particular set. And then you could stamp the sentiment in black ink to really make it stand out. There are lots of ways that you could maybe speed this up just a little bit. Now I will say, I said with one press of the Misty, but I did ink up and stamp everything twice. Because it's in the Misty, I can do that and not worry about anything shifting. And I wanted to make sure that the coverage of the clear embossing ink is really, really good so that I get full coverage when I emboss. I'm gonna sprinkle on my white embossing powder and heat set this, and we are going to repeat this for all 10 cards. Each and every one of them is exactly the same. So the only thing different right now is the color of the background. I found it handy that as I stamped and embossed each of these, I would put the corresponding snowflake with the card background and I just stacked them up. The other thing I did while my backgrounds were drying is I die cut a bunch of sparkly snowflakes using some of the white cards, uh, glitter cardstock in the kit and some silver glitter cardstock from my stash using a die set from Simon Says Stamp. The Aiden snowflake comes in the kit but I felt like we needed a variety of, of other sized snowflakes to finish off the design. So I am going to speed up the video quite a lot and we are going to stamp and emboss all of those backgrounds. If only it went this fast in real life. But again, the more you can do assembly line style, the quicker you can finish. 
Another option would be to switch up the sentiments for all of your cards if you need a lot of different cards for different occasions. I think you can really see the beautiful ombre effect of the positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp on each of these backgrounds where it goes from dark to light. It's smoothed out. You have the great little uh, splatters with all the oxidation. It's just amazing. So beautiful. The rainbow of colors that you can get from the Simon Says Stamp positively saturated inks is absolutely amazing. This is a beautiful color too. Kind of the mint background, so pretty. Who am I kidding? I think all of them are beautiful. <laughs> Here is our aqua background. And then the blue. I always love a blue background with snowflakes and silver. I don't know about you guys, but the blue with the white and the silver, oh, so pretty. Probably very traditional. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to clean my sentiment stamp and put it away, but not remove any of the snowflakes. Something I love to do when creating cards and especially card sets is to create some matching envelopes. I don't like to spend tons of time on the envelope because more often than not, the envelope is going to get tossed. Well, I'm gonna take these white envelopes and I am going to ink up each of these with one of the ink colors from the trio that I used for the card, and I'm going to stamp the snowflakes. Now, something I noticed when I did this is that I thought it needed another snowflake along the left side, so I simply took another snowflake from the set, used an acrylic block, and stamped it up that left side of the envelope. I'm going to do this for all 10 envelopes, doing each of them in the color to coordinate back to the card. Leaving those stamps in the misty, not reinventing the wheel, just making it super easy. I know my envelope is hanging outside of the misty. I'm not super concerned with making sure the stamping is perfect. Light is great here. You're going to be writing the address on the front of the envelope anyway. It just provides a beautiful matching presentation for the recipient, and I love how it looks. So I am going to um, stamp all of these. Again, those sticky mats in the Misty are a lifesaver. I highly recommend them. Um, if you like to do a lot of mass producing like this, it comes in so, so handy. And you can just rinse it off with a little water. I don't scrub it or anything. Uh, that's why it's stained. <laughs> but I let I rinse it off with water when I'm finished, and then I can just keep on using it. At the end of the video, I will show each of the cards matched up with their um, envelope and just to show you how they beautifully they match. It really just leaves the perfect little spot to write the sentiment or sentiment. How about address? And in order not to have to line up a stamp, the mist or the acrylic block with the snowflake worked perfectly. I don't stamp with acrylic blocks a ton anymore, but it does come in handy still. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is stamp a bunch of the happy birthday sentiment. I mentioned early in the video that I am turning all of my cards into birthday cards. Because of that, I felt like I needed to incorporate some sort of a birthday greeting into the design. I think that the happy birthday from the Tiny Words birthday stamp set from Simon Says Stamp is going to be perfect. It's small, it's tiny, and we can make some sentiment strips very easily with it. Again, this can be somewhat time consuming simply because we are going to stamp this over and over. That's not the time consuming part. The time consuming is I did take the sentiment labels die from Simon Says Stamp and I stamp or die cut the greeting uh, for each of these. I love the professional look that die cutting the sentiment strips gives. 
I am not moving my stamp each time. I'm moving my cardstock to stamp it, and then I'm just gonna flip that around, and I'm going to repeat it down the other side as many greetings as I need. I think I stamped one extra just in case I messed one up. I figured while I was stamping it, I might as well. Uh, it seemed like a good plan, and it, it is a good plan, but I didn't need it this time. It's always when I don't do that that I end up needing another sentiment. So I will die cut each of these quickly. I'm using the smallest sentiment label die, and I'm just gonna use a small die cutting machine. I'm using the Hero Arts Craft Cutter for this. I love it. So I run it through one way, line it up with the other side and run it through again. I am going to do this for all of my sentiments. And then I have got all of my components. I have the snowflakes from the Snowflake Trio die out of white and silver glitter cardstock. I have my Aiden Snowflake from the January kit, die cut from Color Blend cardstock, and we have our background and our sentiment label strip. I'm gonna start by adding glue to the back of my Aiden Snowflake and placing it right over the large snowflake that's prominent on the card design. I'm gonna use an acrylic block to help hold that down and hold it flat while the glue dries. I'm also using the Simon Says Stamp Tweezers to hold on to my elements, add glue, and place them exactly where I want them on each of the backgrounds. I like using liquid glue for this as I find that it really works the best, and you'll see me using large acrylic blocks throughout the process to kind of hold everything flat. Now some of the snowflakes I'm adding, I want to hang off the edge of the card, mimicking the look of the stamped snowflakes and to give it that natural look. I'm using a combination of silver and white. Each one will be slightly different just depending on what snowflakes I have. I started with what I kind of what I thought I needed and I did end up having to die cut a few more towards the end when I could see where I might be missing a few snowflakes. After I have my snowflakes adhered, I am going to pop up the greeting with some foam adhesive right under Snow Much Love and then we're going to embellish the final thing but what elevates the card and I'm going to use all things from my stash to do the embellishing. So let's go ahead and attach all of the components for the next card and then I'm going to do the rest off of, cam off of the camera um, be just to save some time. It's a lot of repetition as most things in this video have been but uh, it really ends up, you end up with a beautiful set of cards. So we're gonna pop that one right there along the right side. I love the mix of stamped and embossed snowflakes with the die cut snowflakes. It gives a really cool look with some um, layering on your card. There's the layering of the inking and the distressing and the stamping and embossing and then our die cuts and finally the embellishments. I love building backgrounds like this. It's one of my very, very favorite things to do. Now, once the glue is dry on all of these little pieces, I will flip the panel over. I like to take some long scissors I love the ones from Tim Holtz. I'm going to flip it over and then just trim along the sides to remove anything hanging off the edge. We're gonna take a white top fold card base and go ahead and put some adhesive on the front and pop that right in place, the white border. Look at how that ties into the white embossing so, so beautifully. I notice I didn't cut something very straight. I'm gonna fix that. And then I'm gonna put some glue, a little dab of the glue. In the center of the big snowflake, we're gonna add a big white heart, and then we're going to add a medium heart and a couple of small hearts to the background. But that's not all. Then I grabbed either Trinity Stamps or Pretty Pink Posh Pearls and added them to the centers of some of the snowflakes for more added fun. All of the pearl colors I'm using are listed and linked down below the video here on YouTube, but I think that that little touch just adds a lot. 
Pearls and hearts are my go-to embellishments right now. Well, you guys already know that hearts are my go-to embellishment, uh, but I love how those little pearls add to our monochromatic look. And there is how the set looks together. So beautiful. Now, I really recommend a tool like this Spellbinders Tool-in-One to remove all of the little pieces from the insides of your snowflake die cuts. It removes them fast. So definitely, if you don't have one of those, I highly, highly recommend them. It would even make a fantastic stocking stuffer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the steps off camera and look at these cards. I'm gonna do a little walkthrough of each card with the matching envelope. Super simple, super sweet, and beautiful, happy, bright colors for the birthday recipients. And remember, you don't if you don't need a birthday card, you could switch this to anything. Snow Much Love would work on its own without an added sentiment strip, or you could add any kind of little greeting underneath. So pretty. I absolutely love this kit, love the products, and I hope you guys will consider picking up the January 2023 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.